Well, hello there, and welcome to GDV Log. Um, today I'm going to talk about game design and how you can start making your game idea. Um, when I get an idea for a game, I usually just rush to my computer and start scripting code, and it just ends up an hour later for the lack of a goal. Then I become frustrated and just go lose some StarCraft games. Um, so the first thing you need to know when you start making a game is a solid and polished idea. What I want to do now is to make a little top-down questionnaire which should help you to write down your own game ideas. So, my cool awesome game. The first thing, what kind of a game? What kind of a game do I want to make? And don't think about the details for now. Just think about the basic game styles out there. There's platformer games, puzzle games, RPG games, strategy games, racing games, um, what else? Sports games, adventure games, shooter games, all kinds of games. Just think about these genres and decide your games style. Like, let's see, I just decided that I want to make a platform game. Cool. I'm gonna do a platformer game. So, um, if you can't really decide the game style for your game, don't worry, you can actually think this while we're doing the next part. And we shall actually go there right now. Second thing is, what kind of a insert game style here? So, here we take the first byte of details, but it's not gonna be a big byte. Like, if you haven't decided the style of your game, you can start asking yourself some questions like these. Um, is your game gonna be realistic or not? Like, are you going to do a game that's based on real life or just com something completely fantasy based? Um, what else? Is it turn based or not? Like, are you making a game where you can just run around freely or do you have to make your decisions and then just end your turn? Like, for example, in chess game is turn based. Let's see, um, Super Mario is not. Not that good examples, but hey, it does the point clear. Um, what else can you actually? Uh, ask yourself, um, is it single player or multiplayer? Like, you can think this before you have even your game style set up. Like, do you want to make purely multiplayer game or purely single player game or something in between? And if it's a multiplayer game, is it hot seat game? Like, most console games are where you just sit on your sofa with your friend and play it on the same screen. Or is it gonna be LAN or internet based? Or is it going to be something like MMO where there's thousands of people playing simultaneously? Um, what else? Is it 2D or 3D game? This can actually be the deciding factor for your game, whether you have experience and knowledge about 3D game development or 2D game development. Um, if you have lots of experience in 2D game development, you know sprites and stuff, then you probably want to do that. 
or if you are into 2D but you want to learn about 3D, then you can make your game as a learning experience in 3D. Um, let's make some more specific questions about this view. Is it a top-down? Whether it's 2D or 3D, doesn't really matter. It can be top-down, nevertheless. Um, is it autographic? Which means mostly 2D games are autographic. There's no perspective. Um, is it first person or third person? Like, do you see your own game character or not? If your game even has one, it doesn't necessarily have one. So, hopefully you have your game style decided on this moment. Let's see, I have the platformer game, and maybe I wanna make a both 2D and 3D platformer game. Like, I'm going to make my awesome game. It's gonna be a 3D game but it's um, limited to two dimensions. So everything is based on 3D models, but it plays like a 2D game. That's my decision. It's side-scrolling platformer. Um, not realistic, not even a little bit. And it's real-time. There won't really be any point about making a turn-based platform again. Um, now, the next thing is some... Um, see my game style real dependent questions to ask yourself. Like... Settings. Um, whoops. Yeah, settings. Where is your game set? Is it in space? In, is it set um, underground? World War, World War Two? Um, future? History? Can't type. Um, is it based in some kind of a fantasy world? In or some, uh, this is what I mean, like disc world, or what's the world of Elder Scrolls? Can't remember the name. Um, well, World of Warcraft pl uh, plays in Azeroth, or you can just simply have a game world, like. It's a fantasy world, but it doesn't have any name or any specific places. For example, chess, again, takes place in a game world. Cool. You can just pick some settings for your game. It can be locational settings, like it's located in space. It can be a timeline setting that it's set in the future. Really, it doesn't make any sense, again, if you place a history-based game in space. Well, you can... of course you can do that. It doesn't really matter, after all. Um, so, after you decided the settings for your game, you can write them down, like... Let's see... Again, my... Awesome game. Set in the future, set in a game world. There's no real fantasy world for my game. Um, again, let's keep answering the question, what kind of a platformer game? Um, let's see. Character control. Again, this isn't just platformer-specific question. Let's see, is the single character or multiple characters? Like, if you decided to make an, a strategy game, you 
most probably will have multiple characters, like, I mean, the units, like in StarCraft or WarCraft or Dawn of War, you control a whole army of characters or units. And in a platformer game, you usually just have one single character which you control. Even though in, like, Super Mario or games like that, you can have Mario or Luigi or the princess or the little mushroom guy. Just think about your game game's character control for a moment. And you can, of course, come back to, let's see... The first person, third person part here. If you think like, do I have multiple characters? But I also want to have first person view. How do I manage to do that? So, give it a little moment there. So, again, my awesome game is single player, third person view. Just like any other platformer game. And, let's see, we can also take another game here, like RTS game, real-time strategy game. Let's see, we have a semi-realistic 3D real-time strategy game set in the future. Um, let's make it a 4X game. It's a... Um, you have to explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. This is 4X game. Like, um, Civilization is a 4X game, I think. And strictly multiplayer, no single player campaign whatsoever. So here we have two games for now. We have a single-player third-person view platformer game set in space. It's not realistic, it's side-scrolling, it's a 3D game, but it's limited to two dimensions. And another game we have is a RTS game, which is a semi-realistic 3D real-time strategy game set in the future. It's 4X game more than the strategy game. It's multiplayer, there's no single-player game. Cool! We have two games taught up now. So, the last thing for this video is to dive into the details. So, details. Let's see. We can actually start thinking the details now. We have the basic, like, base for our game already set. So, we have the 2D, 3D platformer. Now, let's start with the player. <laughs> what slash who is the player? Try to come up with your character. For my game, it's gonna be a Super Mario rip-off. It's a Swedish electric engineer with a funny accent. And he's fat. Cool! This is gonna be a market breaker someday. And, um, let's see. The RTS game. Not just a single character, multiple space aliens to control, which keep Eating people. <laughs> <coughs> so, here's my two awesome games so far. You actually should pay a little more attention here. Just let your brain juices flow and think about your game characters or game units or whatever your game is going to consist of. If you're making a simple chess game, you don't really have any well, players there, but the player itself, the real-life player. But if your game has a in-game characters or players that the player controls, now it's the time to pay a moment, a moment for them and think about them. 
So, I came up in like 10 seconds. I Swedish electric engineer with a funny accent and he's fat. And RTS game where I control space aliens. Man-eating space aliens. Cool. Now, let's see. What can or can't the player do? And let's put player or units. So, here we think, what can the player do? For my platformer game, I think the player can jump, he can um, crawl, he can climb ladders, he can... Um, he can fly if he gets wings. Cool. And my RTS game. Many, many units with different abilities. Like, for example, we have a unit called Creeper. That's a cool, cool unit. Everyone's favorite. Um, creeper can liquefy itself. Woo! Um, again, this is just a stupid, just a, a stupid example. Think more about the abilities of the player, and more specifically, what the real life player can do when it when he or she is controlling the in-game player, or character, or units, or whatever. Like, for example, in Super Mario, you can jump, and when you jump on enemies, you can kill them, and if you jump on the, what it's called, turtle, or the little Yoshi, what is it, anyway? Um, when you jump on it, you can then grab it and throw it away. And you can't really do that if you don't jump on it first. Just write down all the details you get, and all the ideas you get for your game characters, like abilities. And when you have the player, like the character you control, when you have that ready, we can jump to next part. So, this video was about starting your game design and creating your idea, and mainly I just showed you a way to create a game idea, or come up with a game idea, without really anything you know beforehand. So, um, next time we go into the game world design and we continue to develop our game idea. This was GDVlog, see you next time.